Senior political reporter Jason Whiteley kicks off our coverage here in studio. And Jason, we've got some preliminary results in. We do, Cynthia. You know, voters in Texas and across the country tonight are making headlines. But let's start with schools in North Texas. Districts are asking voters to let them sell bonds to make major improvements. And Fort Worth, it has the biggest ask on the ballot. The results? Right now they're mixed. Look at this right here. Proposition A is the one that organizers say really needed to get passed. $1.2 billion in limbo here. If it passed, the bonds will pay for to build one new school in Bimbrook where there's been so much growth. The money will also be used to renovate classrooms and campuses all across the district. But look at how close it is right now at 10 o'clock ahead by 209 votes. That update just happened about 10 minutes ago. Uh, the, the screen there has not been updated, but that's the latest numbers 209 votes away. Voters are saying no to Proposition B as well here. Uh, this is $98 million for fine arts, new auditoriums, etc. It's being defeated at this hour. Proposition C also underwater. This was $104 million to build several community stadiums. Why? Well, Fort Worth has to share stadiums. They're not stadiums on every campus, which is something we didn't know until recently. And proposition, proposition D in Fort Worth, $76 million to renovate recreational facilities there, also failing. What happened in Fort Worth with the bonds? Organizers say one reason is that the state legislature requires these ballots to say that bonds are a property tax increase. They are not. Another community leader, though, told us tonight that the district really should have done a better job maybe explaining this to voters. Also in Tarrant County, tremendous voter turnout for a vacant seat on the school board at Carroll ISD. At this hour, Andrew Yeager is leading significantly with 65% of the vote to Stephanie Williams' 35% of the vote. That's with 100% uh, of the precincts reporting tonight. Uh, Carol ISD, of course, has made national news in the last few months with those issues on diversity. William Joy has been reporting on this heated race for several days now and the controversies leading up to tonight's vote. He is live tonight at South Lake City Hall. William, what was really on the line tonight that attracted so many uh, voters to cast ballots in this race? Thank you, Jason, you talk about so many voters get this turnout here in South Lake, which is about 10% below what we would see in a race for governor. And this is a school board seat Now we probably could have predicted the result. You talked about Andrew Yeager leading. He's called himself the conservative candidate in this race. His margin is just a little bit below former President Donald Trump and the last two conservative candidates who ran for school board. And remember, these races are often overlooked. Carol ISD has just 8000 students. But this race has gotten national attention because it's put critical race theory in the spotlight, despite CRT professors and school districts saying that's not taught in K through 12 schools. The district recently made international headlines after a clip went viral of an administrator saying teachers should have books with opposing viewpoints, even issues like the Holocaust. But the spotlight really goes back years to two viral videos of students shouting racial slurs. The district then worked to create an anti bullying and diversity plan, but debate over that plan has led to shouting at board meeting after meeting. Both Jaeger and Williams say they want to lower the temperature. Now he is endorsed by the South Lake Families Pack, which says they're trying to quote protect our traditional way of life, which is currently under attack by extremists. And I talked to Jaeger tonight after Williams conceded, and he said he feels for the hundreds of students who shared stories of bullying and that the district really though should focus on clarifying the code of conduct, not adopting the diversity plan known as CCAP. The community has really spoken now the second election, William, that this has happened where the term is probably got a lot of negativity around it. So I think in discussions, the community can say, what is it that we're trying to solve for? After conceding, we talked to Williams. She said she's still hopeful there will be change in Carroll ISD, that she believes that their effort is closing the gap on those candidates. And remember, this is just a special election, so it's going to be up again in May, and she's planning on running. Take a listen to what she said. I know that there are lots of wonderful people in South Lake. I know that they want all students to feel welcome and safe, and uh, they are going to continue to push for that right alongside me. And remember, it's not just one, but two school board seats who are up in May, and those races are likely to be no less contentious than this one. Jason. Reporting tonight. 
Voters across the state saw eight constitutional amendments also on the ballot, and every one of those is passing. Voters overwhelmingly said yes put to put in the state constitution that residents at nursing facilities can always have a designated uh, visitor despite any pandemic. And in the event of something terrible like that, again, voters also said that no government entity, not a city, not a county, not the state, can ever forbid churches from meeting, something we also saw in the early stages of the pandemic.